really don't know how these animals get entangled exactly. Uh, we think it's either play behavior or navigational error, things like that. And as far as what type of gear it is, it's anything in the water column. So sometimes it's fishing gear, sometimes it might be the mooring that you put your boat on at night. It's anything out there in the water column. So if we can reduce what's in the water, we reduce the entanglement threat. We're looking at about maybe one third of that being local gear, one third of it being gear from Alaska, from their feeding grounds. And one third, we're still scratching our head on. We're going, we don't know what it is. Uh, it's a piece of line that, with no marking buoys, with no numbers on it. And at the end, it's just gonna be a piece of line or a piece of net. We really count on the ocean users out there, especially the tour industry. You know, this is the whale watch companies, the snorkel trips, the dive operations. They're out there on the water each and every day. They're an immense help at helping us find the animals, reporting, documentation, and assessment. It's the foundation of our effort. It all starts there. But here's the thing. We are not getting all the reports. That's just a fraction of the number of animals out there that are entangled. A large whale ends up being a large needle in a very large haystack. And we don't get out to all of them. We can't. It's too late in the day, it's too rough, things like that. So we're only going to cut so many free. The kegging technique, historically speaking, this old whaling technique was throw a harpoon at the whale, have a line attached, get a tow behind the whale in a wooden skiff. It was the Nantucket sleigh ride. If the whale dove, you added a barrel or a keg to the whale to try to slow it down and keep it to surface. That's where the name or term kegging came from. Well, we've modified that technique. We're obviously not gonna throw a harpoon at the whale we're trying to save, but we've got an entangled whale. We've got gear behind it. So in simple terms, we're actually adding gear on the whale via the entanglement to slow that whale down and keep it at the surface long enough that we can pull up and cut it free. So there are risks trying to cut a large whale free. I mean, they can, they can kick you with their tail. Uh, the long flippers that are 15 feet long can come across and hit you. Uh, they don't always know you're there to help them, and you can't assume that at least. So there are risks involved, and that's why we have professionals where we've trained them, we've, we have the right equipment, and they're authorized to do this type of work. There's a grapple hook. It's meant to grab into that entangling gear. In this case, so you're not grabbing the whale, but you're grabbing the gear around that animal, and then you're holding onto the whale via the entanglement. Another way is essentially a skiff hook. It'd be on a longer pole than this. You'd reach out, snap into the entanglement, therefore the whale, release your hook, pole goes out of the way, and again, there's a line attached here, and now you essentially have a control line, whether it's the grapple hook or the clip, onto your animal. Even when we're reaching out and cutting a whale free, a lot of times we'll have a pole cam right here, just above the knife, so that sees the cut, we figure out how we did, and also documents the entanglement at the very same time. And uh, we have a hook knife on the end of the pole here. There's the hook knife right there. There's a whale swimming away. You can see it's much closer now. In fact, <laughs> that was the cut right there. Let's back up here. That happened pretty darn fast. Let's show you that one more time. Coming up, laying the knife on the fluke, little angle to it, cut. There it is, there's the cut. Cuts like butter, it's a Spyderco blade, and it works very well. What if you don't get the whale free? You've put all this energy and motion into it. You're really trying to get the animal free, but at the end, you're unsuccessful, and that will really drain you. You know, there's, there's the feeling of getting a whale free, and that's just euphoria. I mean, it is, I mean, you've, it's, it's a lot of work. You're exhausted, but at the same time, at the end of the day, it'll hit you. Wow, I just, you know, you just freed a 40-ton animal. 